One of the main things meteorologists look at first is are we going to have a La Nina, an El Nino, or something else in the oceans? Oceans dominate the Earth, about 70 something percent water on our planet, so we really look to see what they're trying to show us. Warm temperatures across portions just west of the United States and also to the east of the United States, a lot of warmth on this map. Where isn't there warm temperatures? Well, right along the equator there in the Pacific Ocean that is well below average sea surface temperatures and that shows us that there is a La Nina that has already established itself. It will continue like that as we go throughout the next few, maybe even several months. These computer models, and we have several of them here, are all forecasting La Nina conditions through January and most likely into February and March as well. Some of them even showing well into a moderate, fairly intense La Nina. That uh, Nino 3.4 is one of the main areas that we look at for that prediction of La Nina versus the El Nino. Now with this starting La Nina that we've seen set up, with some of the other conditions that we've looked at in different areas of the globe, with pressure patterns and ocean and atmospheric temperature patterns as well, we expect a negative NAO and negative Arctic Oscillation to be around as we go through late fall into the first portion of winter, in December and maybe into early January as well. That is a dominant area of high pressure. This is a big ridge that sets up in the northern Atlantic around Greenland. And guess what? You have all this cold air bottled up across the Arctic and it spills into the eastern and the central United States, also into Europe around Italy and France and UK as well. And we could see a few of these different waves of really cold air. We've already seen the pattern start to establish this already here in October. So as that continues, we could deal with a very front loaded winter with a lot of cold and snow early on. But the overall pattern with this jet stream is going to be blowing in some decent warm, mild, moist air coming in from the Pacific Ocean. That will likely produce a lot of wet weather, even compared to average across the Pacific Northwest. And also, this is the dominant storm track where we see a lot of systems spin out of the Colorado Rockies into the plains and then into portions of the Midwest, Ohio Valley, Great Lakes, and Northeast as well. So certainly nothing that tells us we're going to be dry and boring across much of the Midwest into the East.